Good morning and Merry Christmas. This is Fleet Chaplain Danish House coming to you from Poughkeepsie, New York. Uh, this is uh, my home here in Poughkeepsie and I wanted to send my f greetings to the fleet of Starfleet Command. I'm here uh, in front of my candelabra Christmas tree, which I've shown you guys in the past. Um, in my family, we have uh, live candles on our Christmas tree. And so uh, that's our Christmas tree for today. I always like to show you some of my nerd ornaments. There's my Starfleet shuttlecraft there on the tree. There's some candies, angels. There's my kayak. I love my little kayak. And uh, yeah, there's down there is Captain Picard in the holodeck. I'm shooting this video early Christmas morning because my family's still asleep and I can shoot it without lots of noise in the house. Uh, let me show you. Last night we did open one present each for the family. So let me show you what I opened. My wife gave me Star Trek Shipyards, Starfleet Ships 2151 to 2293 from Hero Collector. I have already read a few entries in it. I'm a big Star Trek Ships guy. So um, it was exciting to read some of these and uh, it started off with um, with the uh, well, the Phoenix is one of the early ships, um, and uh, the Botany Bay SS Botany Bay is the first one. So that was exciting to read. And oh, let me show you this. This was a little pre-Christmas thing. I knew that I wasn't going to get this for Christmas, so I went out and went to eBay and I bought this. This is the Mega Blocks uh, USS Enterprise. Uh, TOS kit and I'm not obviously not finished building it but man it's gonna be a massive model when it's done I'm very excited about that let me show you my little pile of, there's a pile of boxes and blocks as we're pulling things out to build them me and my son and my daughter working on this model together it's been quite a year for Star Trek fans we've had uh, in this last year, we've had um, new Star Trek shows that we've never had before. Um, I think this, as of this time last year, we've had Lower Decks, two seasons of Lower Decks, which is very exciting. We've had uh, Star Trek Prodigy uh, de uh, debut as well, which is very exciting to me. Star Trek Prodigy is probably my favorite current Star Trek show on the air. I really like it. I love Lower Decks too, and Picard, and I love Discovery. Um, but uh, I love that Star Trek is going back into the realm of animation and uh, Star Trek Prodigy is so much fun and great for kids as well as for adults. So that's really exciting to me. Um, we've got a couple of Star Trek movies that are on the, on, on the stove getting cooked right now. Um, there's uh, they're top secret kind of things, but uh, we hear little hints about it from time to time. And of course this year, this upcoming year, we're gonna see uh, Strange New Worlds debut. Oh, Strange New Worlds, can't wait. And, uh, and more Picard, obviously, more Discovery, uh, and more Lore Dex, um, more Prodigy. So, yeah, it's, this is really, a, a Star Trek-wise, it's an embarrassment of riches. They just uh, pulled all of the, uh, all Star Trek they're going to be pulling in January back from Hulu and Netflix and Amazon Prime and putting it on Paramount+. Plus. So if you want to see uh, Star Trek streaming, you're going to have to be on Paramount+. Plus. And uh, that's got some people upset, but, you know, I, I, it makes sense from a business standpoint. I know what they're trying to do, and uh, I don't begrudge them the, the ability to, to control their own properties. Um, yeah, it's been, it's been an interesting year for my family. It's been an interesting year. My son went away to college uh, for the first time, and, and so that was, uh, you know, exciting. It was what, you, what you plan for is, is launching your kids. Um, it made me very proud that he went away to college. Um, but of course, we miss him very much. We, we, we love our son, we want him to be with us. So when he came home for Christmas, I live here in New York State, he went to college in California. So we talked to him every week, but uh, we really missed him. So when he finally came home for Christmas, uh, it was wonderful to have him back home. Uh, yeah, you know, it's one of the things that I've learned this year, uh, as much as any other year, is that, uh, that things change. Right, things change. It's one of the things that I've been really hammered home is that nothing stays the same. You sort of want to try to get it where it's going to be perfect. You know, you get your life in a sort of a perfect place, uh, or at least a manageable place. But things don't stay that way. Things don't stay the same. Things always change. 
and I was thinking about that uh, as a message to talk to you about today, is, is uh, it's been a challenging year for a lot of us, right? We've had COVID-19. Uh, now that was uh, not just this year, but we've, we've, been, we've been in the second year. Some would say the third year of COVID-19. And, uh, you know, we're, it's, it's been challenging for us, right? So, uh, some of us have lost people that we love. And, uh, and that's been tragic. Some of us have had the, the, the virus. That's been really challenging. Um, some of us uh, have been really chafing under the masking guidelines and under the, the vaccine guidelines. Some of us see those things as a, a way of expressing our love for other people by, uh, by getting the vaccine and by getting masked, that we uh, are doing service to our fellow uh, fellow Americans, fellow people in this world, and uh, some of us those see those things as as violations of our freedom, and that we, that those choices should not be uh, belong to the government. And so it's challenging to to not just navigate those questions, but also it's challenging to uh, to be in such profound disagreement with one another when we feel like we should be agreeing with one another. Um, and so you look at this year gone by, and you think, well, was it a good year? Or was it a bad year? Is this a year that I'd love to live again? Or is it a year that I'm glad has, has passed by? I, I see online and I see people saying that, uh, loving to complain about how bad this year was. And you know, I, when I think about it, I got things to complain about myself. Uh, family stresses have definitely been a part of my year. <laughs> Many of you know that my church uh, building burned down. Uh, just about two years ago, and so we've been in the rebuilding process. We finally were able to get it finished this year, but that's been very stressful, a lot of work, um, and I'm exhausted from all the work that I've had to be doing, um, working 12-hour days and trying to keep people uh, together in a pandemic and trying to keep people together in, in a, a building pro project. Those can be very challenging. So, um, yeah, I mean, uh, it's been a challenging, exhausting year. I've got good stuff in the past, and I've got bad stuff in this past year. Um, and I see people online wanting to sort of say, <clears throat> you know, uh, this is all, it, it's, it's been a terrible year. Yeah. And, and maybe for you it has. I don't know. Um, but when, when I look at what uh, my scriptures talk about, when it talks about reflecting on the past, here's what, here's what my scriptures say. This is out of the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 10 says, Don't say life was better in the good old days. What happened? Wisdom does not lead us to ask that question. Don't say life was better in the good old days. What happened? Wisdom does not lead us to ask that question. The passage continues in verse 13. Look at what God has made. You cannot change a thing, even if you think it is wrong. When life is good, enjoy it. But when life is hard... Remember that God gives us good times and hard times, and no one knows what will happen in the future. The passage isn't saying that there's no such thing as good times or bad times. What it's saying is that uh, both good times and bad times come to us from the hand of God. And I think that the, the reason it's important to think that way is that we need to recognize that, that good times are, are, are there for our enjoyment, good times are there for our blessing, Good times are there for us to use to bless others. Um, but bad times are there as well for good reasons. Bad times are there uh, for us to uh, learn from. Bad times are there for us especially to learn endurance and perseverance. Bad times are there for us to uh, learn how to, how to handle life with uh, equanimity, to be able to say, um, you know, that good times or bad times, I'm going to be the same person. I'm going to trust in God, and I'm going to be the same person, whatever, whether good times or bad times happen. I'm not going to change who I am or how I respond to things uh, because things are, are, are good or bad. I'm going to try to be generous. I'm going to try to be kind to others. I'm going to try to trust in God and rely on God, uh, whether things are going well or things are going, uh, and from my perspective, poorly. Um, good times and bad times both come from God, and both uh, are intended to help us to learn. And so if, if we're always wishing that times were different than they are, we're not spending the time living the life that we're in right now. 
Um, and I think that's one of the challenges of nostalgia, both nostalgia for good times in the past and also sort of the bad times nostalgia, saying, uh, oh, you know, I'm, I think this has been a really horrible year and let's, let's all commiserate about how horrible the year has been. Well, there's some benefit to that. I see, I see some value in that. But, but the truth is that uh, whatever sort of nostalgia we have, uh, that this has been a uh, let's think about the great times of the past or this has been a, a really sucky year um, both types of nostalgia keep us from living the life that we're in right now they keep us from looking at l life today and saying how can i live today as uh, as a kind and generous person how can i live today as a person who trusts in god and loves other people um, that, I think, is the challenge uh, that we have faced, to live today rather than to live uh, in the past. <clears throat> the, uh, if you've ever been a part of a 12-step program, you know that uh, the 12-step programs love to uh, pray the serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change those things that I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Um, Boy, what a great prayer that is, right? Serenity to accept the things I cannot change. We can't change the past, right? It's one of the things that none of us can change. It's it's there, it's in the past, it's set. Um, unless you're James T. Kirk, uh, <laughs> you're not changing the past. Um, none of us have a starship to go slingshotting around the sun. We're not going to be changing the past. Um, so we need serenity to accept the things we cannot change. Um, we can't change the nation, the world around us. We can't change the pandemic. Um, those are things that we can't change. So we need serenity in those uh, areas. Uh, there are things that we can change. We can change ourselves. We can change our response to the world that we live in. We can't change the world itself. Um, so give us courage to change the things that I can. Uh, but the key thing and the tough thing is the wisdom to know the difference. How do I know which things I can change and which things I can't change? We know we can't change the past. Uh, we know how difficult it is even to change ourselves. We need wisdom to be able to, to address it. And wisdom tells us that nostalgia for the, the, the good old days or, or sort of uh, commiserating about uh, the, how sucky life is today, that those sorts of, uh, of nostalgia uh, can often be counterproductive. That we need to look at how we're going to live today. That's my encouragement to you. How are you going to live today? How are you going to live today as a blessing to those around you? How are you going to live today uh, in trust and care rather than uh, in cynicism and despair? How are you going to live as, as the, the person that God wants you to be today? That's my reflection for you today. Um, and, you know, my the answer to that question is how, how am I going to do those things? My answer to those questions is always only with God's help, because I uh, certainly have challenges in, with nostalgia myself. Hey, uh, thank you so much, Starfleet Command, for joining me for this little devotional thought here on Christmas Day. I'm so happy to be part of Starfleet Command. I hope you are as well. I'm happy to that you are part of Starfleet Command. I'm glad that we're, we're together in this group, um, and I'm glad that I'm a Star Trek fan. It's a good time to be a Star Trek fan. Uh, I want to tell you, uh, you and your family, Merry Christmas, live long and prosper, and I look forward to talking to you again at my next video.